good and release it leg okay our knees hang over the edge over the end for more freedom and our knees good. so our practice today yeah you don't have to acquire those props yeah, well, my props are quite affordable. Yeah. But blanket, yeah. Strap, belts, necktie, the service your block, yeah. books, timber, yeah. You can even do what? Um, pillows, yeah. But I prefer the sturdy ones. Because yoga blocks, yeah, it's a good investment because you can use that, well, for example, in supporting you, yeah, as I've um, showed you the halasana, the uh, viparita karani, and also when you're learning your transitions to the downward dog, to your forward jump, yeah, yeah, many things. Okay, and then from there, yeah, shifting forward and curling upwards okay and glide it through okay and do your downward dog okay easy matching dog lifting to alternate okay and also yeah if you are choosing your blanket yeah make sure it's not it's not slippery so these are like yeah threaded ones yeah <laughs> i found um um well, one of the shops here, and it's suited for like grip. Yes, so it's like a mat actually. Yeah. Up, and then just march in place. A bit and stretch, and a few side to side as well. All right. And let's finish the session with back bends. Okay. Probably your body is so loose now, you can do a strasana or again. Well, box can support you in aiding and in giving you additional height, whether medium or the high. Okay, good. Or you can do it flat on your feet. Yeah, I'll show you both. Yeah, breathing in. And I've given so many tutorials on this position, the you Ostrasana. Know, Just feel free to study them you know, for more intensive learning. Yeah, but at this stage of my practice, yeah, using the block in the Ustrasana is actually restricting my movement. So what I'll do is I'll just do it freely. Yeah. All right. Good, you can move in and out of the shoulder. Then you can rub forward and side to side and settle for a few more breaths. All right, come up and walk your knees in place. And you can rub from side to side. Awesome. Good. Good. Downward dog. Good. <coughs> and alternate your downward facing dog. All right. Nice and complete practice. Good. Many alternatives you know, to suit your needs, your purpose, your level, <laughs> how you feel for the day, and then I will just flow once you. All right, and come back to the floor. And then you can kneel, cross, and sit. Or, oh, well, then this is one, again, another you know, benefit of having the yoga block. If your program for the day is about strength and then building your know, power, you can do that too. Yeah, so good investment. Yeah, and they are affordable. You can find your yoga blocks at your local shop. And back here. Okay, 
and then few rubbing around in circles. So I will continue my self practice now. No, I will keep talking. Yeah, but yeah, that's my goal actually, is to guide you through simple, doable, yeah, but complete practice of releasing tension in the spine, the hips, and the brain. You're using positions where we're either lying on the backs and lying on our fronts. Okay. I'll see you next time. Yeah, or you may continue joining me as I progress my practice. Yeah. Thank you. Have a lovely day. Yeah. Bye. But, yeah. Progressing? Yeah. Why not? Okay. Yeah. And in here, you might yeah, remove your blanket already, or I'll try and yeah, use this for this round of yeah, Daniel Rasa. Okay, in here rubbing, yeah, side to side. Okay. Labini Pranayama there. Mm, and breathe. Oh, feels good. You're releasing blockages down the spine. Okay, and down the floor and the back. All right, rubbing around the circles. Good. Good. Side stretching. You can use your strap again. Yeah. So sometimes, even if I can do it freely without the prop, when I utilize props, I feel a deeper sense of openness because there, there's less tension. You can adjust and adapt, not loosen or go deeper. So uh, props, uh, it doesn't mean that if you're using props, the, the postures are not deep. And then I say challenging, oh no, they could be challenging because when you're using yoga props, yeah, you can investigate. Yeah, you can go deeper into your inner linings. Yeah. All right. Good. And then when I use yoga props, I feel lighter. Good. I'll do Danyarasana again. Good. Yeah, example here. Yeah. That prop really help me open the shoulder and the hip and in here yeah free and light open and pain free all right back to the floor and then to the back yeah and circle around. Okay, that progressing to some deeper ones. All right, probably I'll let this go already. Uh, let me teach you how to use the blank blanket. Yeah, I was like to say bolster, blow bolster blanket in supporting your practice. Okay, now like the bolster. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do alternate three-legged dog first. So lifting and stretching. Okay, great. Ustrasana with the blanket. Yeah, so that will give you more height. I should have given you this alternative in the first half, but it's right. I will post this lesson anyway, in parts. Okay, let me advance this to the kneeling drop back. Easy. All right.
I don't want to be forcing too much. So I want more freedom and openness and actually less bandhas. Yes, bandhas are really helpful in promoting the stability. But there are times that when you engage your bandhas too much, your inner body becomes so yeah, energized. But if you just trust the joints, and that's what the practice is about, actually, yeah, to open and loosen. Yeah, so we're using less of that internal yeah, dynamics, more of the openness and freedom, like the leaves of the tree swaying and then moving. Yeah, that's my inspiration. Okay. Good. Let me turn the angle. Just make sure my microphone is still attached. Okay. And lifting up. I'm so thankful to this device I use. <laughs> Even if I roll through the wirings and the cables, <laughs> they're still working. Yeah. I can fully vouch to the durability of this microphone system. Okay. I'm a witness how this device is that dependable. Okay, all right. Let me try again this one for my Ekapada. Kaputasana prep. Okay, I'll try to like seemingly dance my way through it. Coiling in and out. All right, nice and light. Yeah. Yeah, looks like I'm <laughs> doing in and out of some coiling motion there. Okay, here we go. Easy as. All right. Loosen a bit, soften a bit. Why not, if I can already progress this to the Ekapada, I'll do it. I think I can, yes. Yeah. And then with that, even a small additional height really makes a huge difference in adding support for the body. Okay, I can already walk this foot forward. And breathe. All right. Releasing. I'm not pressing. I'll just go in, spring it up. Good. Okay. First try is always the heavy try. Yeah. The next ones are going to be lighter and more open. Good. I'll try to do the Kaputasana with the blanket. Okay, you can actually do additional height, like the bolster. But I just want to make it just as high as my ankle. So I keep my knees engaged. Mm -hmm. yeah, sometimes I... I'm through it. Arm bones forward, inwards, upwards, and then hang. Forwards, inwards, upwards and backwards, and then hang. Wave, 
while you coil in and out, adjusting the knees. You can rub your feet forward. And this is the beauty of having that blanket. It adds more mobility. All right. No rush. You can even uh, pull in and out. Even if you can already see your feet, don't rush it. All right. Well done. Breathe. Okay. Still heavy on my right, but we'll sort it out. Okay. Come up. I'm not pressing. All right. And easy as swinging, moving side to side. Yeah, I also use that blanket to rub in and out of my hip joint through the knees. Engaging the prana, the pragvini pranayama in irrigating those inner linings of the hips. Okay, let me flow. Alternate legs. And then forward, upwards, still hanging over that you know, blanket, but hand backwards. Okay. Ekapada, this leg, and let me place this behind me so I can just angle so you can still have a clear reference. Okay. Yeah, you can reach. It's like the Matsakri Dasana, that's how I feel this one. Yeah. Moving inward. Yeah. So everything goes to the midline. To the midline. And I feel my knee is still tight there. I will try and rub around even the ankle, yes. Now I'm open, okay. Back, forward, upwards, and hang. Yeah, you can bend and stretch like you're the octopus. Okay, like coiling, light, yeah. Not too much bandhas, more of lightness, but of course, yeah, when the bandhas become open, they inevitably yeah, work inside without you consciously doing them. But less of that conscious effort. Okay. All right. So light. <laughs> and stay here. Breathe. Right, come up. Good. That was very light, actually. I feel like <laughs> toppling over that side. Yeah. Maybe because of the sun, <laughs> blinding my eyes. Yeah, fanning side to side. Okay, and then rubbing. Okay, Kapatasana. Yeah, that's the evening sun around this part of the year, November, October, November, December, through the first quarter of next year. It's summertime here in NZ. And that's where <laughs> the sun sets. Okay, forward, reach, you're crawling. And waving 
and adjusting, rubbing, okay, lengthening, accessing the lines, breathing, and settling. Feels good. Like the the pressure of sitting all day, writing, working on the computer. It's gone. And now there's only openness, lightness, freedom. and clarity. Good, see? I use that blanket in supporting my way up and not putting too much pressure on the joints. Okay? And I'll do one Kapitasana of that blanket. I tell you, it's not easy with a blanket, yeah. Because there you're, you're left with the strength of your knees, your hips, yeah? And then, since my goal is not to utilize too much of my bandha side, and for someone who is not that inherently flexible, especially in the back bend department, that's challenging for me. All right. Good. Free hand. All right. And my aim is to just hang loosely. and rubbing around the mouth. All right. And there. And breathe. Try and walk the knees to the middle. Lightly forward. Okay. So my hips are fully open and aligned. Hmm. Good. And rise. Yes. Another day. And I could see my shadow over there <laughs> coiling and bouncing. All right, beautiful. Yeah. Hip openness now. Okay. All right, furthering the length of the nadis. Okay. And I just wanted to hang loose here like the puppy dog. You might observe my elbows are quite hyperextended. Yeah, rest assured I'm not hurting myself. Yeah, that's how I feel it. Yeah, at this stage of my practice, since I'm so aware of the intersections, I can flow the breath there. Yeah, those are my ways of energy channeling. I'm not hurting them. Yeah, if I force myself, for example, to keep them slightly bent, 
I feel the stagnation inside. Yeah. So those are like kriyas, you know, motions or positions where from an eye of a beginner, my, or maybe an experienced practitioner, or from a scientific or anatomical point of view, they're quite, I uh, say, improper, you know, or could potentially you know, cause uh, injury. But in this practice, when the energy anatomy is open, oh, the body, yeah. <laughs> the body is really open. It's like empty. Yeah. I could describe it like, like a newborn. <laughs> a newborn is less to get hurt <laughs> when they, for example, topple or even roll and then fall yeah, than us. Yeah? Because newborns, they have, yeah, they are closest to the purity. Yeah, their nadis are still yeah, open and then clear of the blockages. Yeah, because as the senses develop, and actually the senses are the cause of those, yeah, not just physical blockages, but also of the mental. Yeah, because this will yeah, require us to reverse. Yeah. A uh, way of thinking, a way of life in general, because achieving this, yeah, it's not easy. Yeah, the first few parts, well, you will experience your know, discomfort or even pain, yeah, and it will test your patience, yeah, your strength. <clears throat> because you know, for me, that's yoga. Yeah, we start in a state where we're so close to our pure nature. And then as we progress and the senses take over, we build blockages. And the body, the mind, and the spirit, they get so tangled up, they hardened. Yeah. Now, this practice of Hatha Yoga, not just Hatha Yoga, but also meditation, you untangle them again. You detach them again. And for me, that's the principle of detachment. You might have heard detachment, detachment, detachment. Detachment from the senses. Detachment from stagnation. Detachment from the blockages. We're on this <laughs> world, can we... Yeah. Well, understand that essence, well, only through practice. Yeah? Detachment, detachment of the bind of, or the bondage of the senses. And for us, you know, to get ourselves free again from those original sins you know, or acquired sins, are some scars included, our karmas, yeah, the stress. We said check our bodies, our brain, our hearts. They all end up clogging those nadis, the many thousand energetic channels they hold in the system. And then the yoga, Hatha Yoga is a science of purifying them again yeah. <laughs> by breaking free. First, from the energetic physical blockages. It's not easy, but when the physical blockages yeah, separate from the energetic body, then the energy will flow again. The prana, yeah, prana. Prana is made up of like two syllables. Yeah. And the first syllable means the first, the first, and then the second one is life source. So the first yeah, point or element yeah, of life. Yeah, that's prana. And then that prana enters our body yeah, during conception. Yeah, I'm not just sure how many weeks, but I think the four, 14th week? Yeah, not sure about that, but during conception. The first trimester. All right, marching the legs in place. Good. And this prana. Yeah, becomes our vital life force. 
as we are growing inside our mom's womb now. And in this prana, although will sustain us through the rest of our life, yeah, this prana, the essence, gets back inside the hips, where it actually started from. Yes, that's the kundalini. Yeah. Yeah. But, well, when it's down the hips, yeah, because it blends with the energy of the hips, it's the apanavayu. Yeah. And the very essence of the apanavayu is actually the, the, the life force, the first prana, yeah, and that goes down there. That's why the hips are like the core and the foundation of not just the body, but also of our energetic anatomy and yeah, our psychic and spiritual realms as well. Okay? Yeah, I've been bubbling a lot about practicing because you know, you know my practice already. Yeah, <laughs> I've been sharing with you all of these techniques now. With this yeah, session, hopefully, I'm able to like add philosophy and why is it important to accomplish yeah not just the asana but also of the matter of services yeah and i could have whole day and talk about that under the sun but in a nutshell that includes your diet yeah reduction of mental stress yeah and, and i'm guilty of that today Yes, I had so many pending tasks. Yeah, but yeah, I'm still accomplishing my duty. <laughs> All right. What else? Um, of course, uh, preservation of our vital life force. Yeah, the essence of the brahmacharya. All right. So brahmacharya, it could be another topic altogether. But for me, brahmacharya is not just about. Uh, controlling the sexual activity? No. Bhamakarya in its essence is the preservation of the life force. The life force be meaning, yes, of course, there's a big chunk of it about the, the sexual energy because the ojas yeah, for us men and the ovum for uh, yeah, females, they're actually potent with the prana. They're the closest yeah, when it comes to the purity of the prana and the semen, as well as the excel, the ovum for females, are so brimming with that life force. Yeah, so preservation of sexual energy plays a vital role. But more than that, it's the preservation of your energy as a whole. As a whole, yes. So, uh, if for example, you yeah, you're up all night partying. Yeah, that's a violation, a, a violation of the brahmacharya. Yeah, yes, you might be accomplishing yeah, the observances of the uh, the diet. Yeah, you might be vegetarian, strict veg vegetarian, which is good. Yeah, but yeah, here you are cons consuming alcohol. Yeah, what's the purpose? <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's about like cohesiveness, consistency. Huh? You just don't accomplish one aspect. Yeah, you have to yeah, couple that and complement that with the other adjunctive yeah, observances. All right, another thing. Hey, you're so um, religious with your asana practice. Yeah. And then you're so um, dedicated when it comes to your pranayama practice. But, yeah, you're so stressed at work. And then you're just using your asana and pranayama yeah, to, I say, distract your mind from you know, your mental stress. It's also not possible. Yeah, because the mental stress, yes, all the asanas and pranayama, they could help you, you know, release tension there. But if you're if you're adding mental stress you know, day in and day out, you're also hurting not just your, your nadis, but also your health, yeah? Because stress could really take a toll on your sleeping pattern, those things, yeah? Your weight, yeah? So this practice is more than what you do on the mat, really, yeah? 
well, I am so grateful to have the support, yeah, and my circumstances suit me. My nature suit my practice, but without the support from my circles, my family, this wouldn't be possible because one has to make a living, you know what I mean? In these modern times, <laughs> we can't just be living in the woods. Yeah. And then just do yoga day in, day out. Yeah. So, but I also truly really believe a part of it is destiny. Yeah, yeah. Because personally, I am an energetically sensitive individual. And that, yeah, yeah, for a time, let me, oh, uh, make me wonder, why, yeah, why? What's the purpose? What's the reason? And then now that I know better, I think I can understand why. Yeah, the the situations, yeah, the events that come away. If, if there's a big if. If we try our best yeah, to keep it straight and aligned with that purpose and the ethical and the moral values of our existence, then we will be led to that path. We are originally designed for, intended for. Yeah, however, that's why we have the freedom, the free will. Yeah, we're just humans. Yeah, somehow, you know, we reach the crossroad and we're given many turns. Yeah, which way you want to turn? I'm not a saint. You know, I had my fair share. I tell you, I had my fair share. And then always after uh, escaping or successfully <laughs> preventing myself from, well, falling into the abyss of misery and suffering, for some reason, I'm saved. <laughs> yeah. Also, I truly believe, yeah, part of it is destiny. You are designed for yeah, higher purpose, higher purpose may not be this lifetime, you're building up in this lifetime, but I can 100%, more than 100% tell you that there's another one, there's another transition out there. Okay, where was I? Okay, now. But up at Masana. And side to side. It, hopefully you're enjoying this yeah, lesson of not just the asana, but also of you know, the philosophy of the practice. And then speaking of mistakes and challenges, yeah, we're also not Puritans. Yeah. We don't hurt ourselves, yeah, and we don't punish ourselves for committing mistakes in our lives, yeah, we rise above it. And then we prevent ourselves from getting into that situation again, consciously. Yeah, we learn from our mistakes, so to speak. And then Hatha Yoga yeah, is really a powerful technique, not just of the, the spirituality of it, but the essence and the scientific part of it. Because whatever your energy you, well, you spend from those, I would say, less productive um, observances, you're able to replenish them through the techniques of Hatha Yoga. And you come back, yeah, stronger. You come back to continue your beautiful journey. Ah, yes, it is. There's this like six obstacles 
yeah, to attaining success in Hatha Yoga. And one of them is like adhering to rules, yeah, over exertion as well. So I think my opinion is, yeah, even those mistakes we commit along the way, they're part of the journey. They're part of the blueprint. They're part of the plan. Because through them, yeah, you will realize yeah, your inner potentials. Yeah. I could just talk through those principles all day. But of course, there are sensitive parts about it, not only can be learned from a teacher. Okay. Breathe. There's also this argument that, oh, you, need, you don't need those complicated asana to achieve, well, for example, enlightenment or purification. Yes, I believe that, because there are people who are energetically sensitive to begin with, and then all they need is maybe just the basic ones. However, yeah, I doubt if they can like explain the connection, the scientific physical connection of their spiritual gift yeah, to the whole process. Yeah. Like it's not it's no esoteric. It's no magic. It's nothing supernatural. Yeah. And in Hatha Yoga, if you go through the stages and then tackle you know, the stages and face them, go through them. Yeah. Break free from the challenges and come back safe and sane and then grounded. Yeah. That's difficult. Mm. And yeah, probably that's the reason why I am so spontaneous about yeah, the practice about the discipline. No. Because yes, I was given the energetic sensitivity to begin with, but I just didn't rely on it. Actually, I didn't understand it at all. <laughs> and then for, for a period of my life, I lost it. I deliberately, consciously move away from it because that's dangerous. And it could cause yeah, mental, psychological imbalances. Yeah, so I was thankful. I lost it. Yeah, I literally swayed from it. How did I do that? I worked on my body unconsciously. Unconsciously, really, I tell you. I didn't, I didn't know that by working on my body, not just the yoga, yeah, be, because back then I was doing weight training. Yeah, I was physically active. Yeah, I focus on my career, my job. Yeah, but for some reason, even my career has always been <laughs> teaching. Yeah, might not be yoga, but teaching, teaching. Yeah, staff. I was in a service, customer service um, business for many years. Yeah, teaching people how to do their. Yeah, jobs well, connecting with people, and customers, yeah, and all of this are like big plan, part of the big design, yeah, for us. And I know, yeah, you are too. Yeah. But of course, as I've mentioned, yeah, our circle, our support, yeah, the people around us. Yeah, are our guardian angels. I truly believe that. There are 
angels yeah, watching over us, guiding over us. I cannot count how many times I was saved. All right, marching in dog, up and down. All right. And then body over the hands, down, and up. Okay. That's the end of it. Yeah. The body is open. Yeah. The energy is flowing. Now we can channel it already. Yeah. But I don't do my pranayama yeah, right after asana. I allot a separate time for that and meditation as well. Because the meditation part, yeah, this way you allow yeah, your nature, which is yeah, the essence of the prana, yeah, sitting down your hips to emerge. Yeah, so you can explore yeah, while you are still fulfilling your mortal duties. Right. Let's breathe to that. Inhale. And exhale. And that realm 